Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining this session uh, on education in quantum technologies. We've already throughout this week had a number of exciting uh, sessions uh, uh, dedicated to various aspects of quantum technologies and education. And now we have four uh, very knowledgeable panelists and try to have a helicopter view of what is needed in the field of, of quantum technology in the future and in terms of education. So we will, uh, I will introduce the four speakers as they come, uh, but uh, we will start with Celia Mertzbacher, uh, who is the executive director of QEDC, and she will give us a, a, a roughly 10 minute uh, introduction and overview of the workforce needs in the industry. So go ahead, Celia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jakob. And thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to be part of the panel today. My name is Celia Mertzbacher. I'm executive director of the U.S. Quantum Economic Development Consortium, or QEDC. And um, I'll, I'll be presenting today a little bit of uh, information about what the quantum industry workforce needs will be based primarily on a survey that we did of our membership. QEDC has um, about 120 U.S. companies among its members. We did a survey now uh, just over a year ago of the membership. We got 57 responses. So we have some data to assess what the, the needs of the, the community are going to be looking ahead. Um, first, I just want to share with you some more recent data. This is taken from information that I received from Terrell Franz at Harrisburg University. Terrell keeps track and tries to collect information about jobs that are posted at any time. And according to his data, uh, of course, it's not complete, but he estimates that it might represent roughly 70% of the job postings at any time. There is a, a growing number of jobs, and I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but um, he did share a listing of who is currently looking to hire people who have quantum skills and, and where quantum is part of the, the work description. And I picked um, the companies. There currently are uh, some 719 organizations that have posted jobs over the last 12 months. And these are just some of those companies. And I purposefully picked ones that, first of all, I think you would recognize, but also maybe that don't come to mind right away when you think about who's hiring quantum related jobs. And that includes um, quite a few that are in the sort of financial space, either uh, investors or banks or companies like PayPal and Rakuten that are e-commerce oriented uh, credit. Julia, just a quick question. Uh, the slides uh, uh, that you, sh can you share them? Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at them. Thank you. Exactly. We're just a... Are you not seeing them at all? Let me share. No, just share screen and then there we go. That's better. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I should have seen this, the script, the share screen logo there. Um, okay, so this is just the first slide of the presentation with a list of all these companies that are looking to hire people that have quantum knowledge and some quantum skills. And as I said, there are several from the finance and, and uh, business or, or uh, sort of commerce side at the top left here. There are quite a few from the automotive sector that you can see next, Ford, General Motors, BMW, Porsche, Rolls-Royce, Volkswagen. And then there are several from what you might say is the sort of computing world, Samsung and Texas Instruments and others, but not necessarily the companies you think of when you think of quantum computing. Um, most recently, there was a job that was added from Red Hat. Um, and the last column is a sort of potpourri of companies, uh, aerospace, telecommunications, Adidas, Procter & Gamble, consumer-facing uh, companies, uh, and, and Eli Lilly and, and uh, uh, pharmaceutical-type firms. So there's obviously uh, a, a sort of forward-looking view from a diverse set of companies that quantum is going to be impactful and important and potentially disruptive, and they need to be getting uh, in-house capability. We list our job openings for QEDC member companies and organizations on our website. So you can look there as well for examples of people who are hiring in this space. 
So in 2020, we did a survey of our members and we got, as I said, 57 responses. We asked three questions. What positions are you going to be trying to fill in the next five years? Um, for each of those positions, what skills would you like the individual to have that you hire? And what degree do you imagine would be most relevant to that position? So we have a quite a rich data set there. And I'll just share with you some of the results. Um, we do have a publication that I'll reference at the end here, and you can look at more information there. So um, I guess a first conclusion was we actually asked how, what would you be um, hiring in two years, the next two years, and the next three to five years? That was as far out as we asked. And in fact, for both of those time frames, there were sort of similar results, slight differences. But um, the main conclusion is that the um, plans for hiring look like they are strong going into the future. So as we look ahead five and even more years, we can expect to be um, a, a lot of jobs out there. So for students who are in their education, there's a good future. And I just show you don't have to focus too much, but there are a lot of different kinds of jobs. That's the other message. Um, we had a big list and people could write in other jobs. So um, there was a big cross-section of job types. So for the most needed jobs, and these were, if I go back and say, if you look at the bottom, the organizations that checked uh, the same kind of job the most, those were for experimental physicists, algorithm developer, quantum algorithm developer, and um, applications architect. Um, if you go next, you look a little farther, you do see jobs like product sales and marketing, technical support and marketing. Um, so there's more and more business type jobs being uh, filled in the future. So the top three, what degree did the company say they were looking for if they were to hire an experimental physicist? Well, there, not surprisingly, it was most likely to be someone with a PhD in physics or applied physics. But for some of the other jobs that were in high demand or likely to grow in number, um, it might be another field like computer science for a quantum algorithm developer or even uh, less than a PhD, a master's degree in computer science was the preferred degree for someone uh, with the title applications or solutions architect. So there's a diversity of fields and a diversity of degree types. This is just a sort of full set of data on what degrees were uh, preferred. And so again, we have this list of uh, jobs on the left. And then for each job, what uh, degree was preferred? So the purple is a bachelor's degree. The red is a master's degree. Green is PhD, and then we had uh, sort of on-the-job training and, and two-year programs or vocational was, uh, in some cases, more uh, likely, for instance, in a, a database engineer or a test and measurement engineer. Um, but the, the sort of takeaway message from this is that for most of these jobs, if you add bachelors and masters together, purple and red, that is more than 50 percent of the um, respondents saying that would be a preferred degree, not a PhD, for most of the jobs. Once you get down here towards the bottom, theoretical physicist, experimental physicist, then a PhD is more likely to be required. So the takeaway message here is there's lots of opportunities for people who don't have a PhD necessarily. Um, this is just a snapshot to show that for any job, of course, different skills are going to be required or sought. And so this is the answer for what skills someone called a control system engineer might be expected to have versus a software programmer. And, and they're different. And so I think it's important for educators and students and people who are trying to prepare themselves for a career to recognize that they can build on um, the skills they have and go into a quantum career with perhaps just a little additional um, uh, background or training um, because there are many different types of positions with different skills being sought. So when you try to actually look at the skills that are sought collectively, this is where we did some analysis. We looked to see which skills did the most people check um, so we were looking for skills that would be broadly uh, of interest. And again, if you're a student or an educator, 
you might want to focus on providing those skills which are going to open the most doors and follow the allow the most paths for someone to follow. And we looked at those and first of all there were quite quite a lot of them. Uh, so again diverse skill sets needed and only some of them, the ones that are in blue here, um, had sort of quantum in the title in a sense. So a uh, quantum algorithm developer would need some quantum skills. There were two. For, so the way to read this is for any given job, how many skills were frequently checked by a respondent? Usually very few. So again, diversity is sort of the answer here. But Cecilia, there's one minute. Uh, uh, okay. Minute. Um, the, the message here is that there's uh, many non-quantum skills sought uh, by many employers. And the final question and answer is what are the challenges in hiring workers? And the top two answers were not enough people with the required knowledge and lack of hands-on experience. Um, so I'll just skip over the summary, which I just sort of expressed when I talked about the slides and leave these parting thoughts. Number one, I believe educators can prepare students by just giving a little bit of quantum background or basic information fundamentals. And with their uh, traditional fields of research or study, they're able to prepare themselves for a career. Professional organizations and societies that are in classical, what I think of as classical technology areas like physics and optical science and, and uh, so on, photonics can help their members who maybe aren't in school but could benefit from some reskilling. Companies, I think, can be part of the solution by providing internships and giving that hands-on experience that's so important. And finally, the government programs, the national programs can partner with industry to create opportunities where students can spend some time in a real world environment and again, get some hands-on experience. So thank you very much. And I look forward to the panel discussion. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much, Celia. Now we'll go, go ahead to the, uh, to the three other panelists uh, and we'll start with Ines de Vega, uh, who is head of quantum uh, innovation at IQM. And I'd like to ask all three panelists to just situate their own corporate efforts, their company efforts, within the landscape of quantum education and, and, and maybe identify the gap that, that you are currently addressing. Ines, go ahead. So hello everyone. Thank you very much for, first of all, for inviting me to be here today, for having me here uh, representing my company, IQM. So it's a specifically a great pleasure because um, um, actually uh, our company is really having a quite ambitious hiring plan and like many other companies in the in this sector. And we are hiring people in very diverse fields as Celia was pointing out. Um, well, my, again, my name is Ines de Vega. I'm the head of the quantum innovation department in IQM uh, located mainly in Germany. Uh, although IQM is, is quite an international company with a presence in Finland, in, in Germany, and also in Spain and in the future uh, in, in France. Um, what we are doing in our company, we are developing uh, activities in three different work lines or fields. So first of all, we are building what we call general purpose quantum computers um, and where the quantum processor is based on qubits arranged in a regular array operated with single and two qubit gates. And um, so in this regard, the goal is really to, to build and commercialize uh, early quantum computers for research and education. But I think what is most exciting when it comes to the topic of education is a second work line that we are pushing quite heavily, which is that of building and developing what we call application specific or co-designed quantum computers, where the quantum processor is flexibly adapted to optimize the performance of certain classes of algorithms to solve specific problems uh, in industry and therefore to bring the quantum advantage earlier. So this requires having people that not only are experts in quantum technology, but also on different applications that, uh, that, um, that we may have uh, in industry, like for instance, chemistry, optimization, uh, finance, et cetera. And finally, um, we are also working on uh, what is called quantum accelerators, which is also, I think, important from the perspective of education, 
because, well, this initiative is actually, as you know, to integrate quantum computers within high performance supercomputing centers that are having the most powerful classical computers. And therefore, we are merging the power of quantum with uh, uh, the most powerful classical uh, computers. And uh, this requires having people that are educated in the interface between, um, well, basically classical software developers and architecture developers and quantum software engineers and also quantum hardware engineers. So this is again one topic where we are working that requires this multidisciplinary approach. So thank okay. you. Thank you very much. And second, uh, Fabio Scafirimutu. Uh, I'd like to invite you on, uh, so you are education outreach and community lead uh, for, for, for Europe. So we've been meeting you a lot in, in many of these discussions also. So, so give us your perspective, please. Thanks, Jacob, and thanks. Uh, I mean, happy to be, to be here and start this conversation about quantum uh, education. I mean, as, as, as Jacob mentioned, uh, it's, uh, and he knows well, uh, it's uh, the core of, of, my, of my job. So I work for IBM, uh, uh, quantum and in IBM quantum we have different uh, departments that of course cover the whole uh, spectrum of developing uh, a technology such as uh, quantum computing so we have uh, so in terms of jobs uh, you can imagine we have of course physicists we have engineers we have developers and we have different and more business related departments but the department I'm part of the team I'm part of is called uh, um, IBM quantum community team uh, and the name may be misleading, but the core of uh, and the essence of this team is working on education, is working on outreach, is work on advocacy and workforce development. So you may know uh, some of the activities that we have done uh, under, under the brand of Kiskit, which is the software development kit that um, we have developed in IBM. And, and it's, uh, it's a software that controls the quantum computer uh, stack. And under this, this name, we have organized a lot of activities which, goes in, which go in a direction of uh, education or outreach. So activities such as, for example, the Kiski textbook, which is free and available for, for everyone online. Activities such as uh, the IBM Quantum Challenge, hackathons, uh, Kiski camps, uh, the course for high school qubit by qubit, uh, and, and, many other, and many other activities. Because we, we, we do believe that education, and in particular preparing the next uh, quantum workforce, which is indeed the topic of today, it's, it's super important. And as we mentioned, we also believe that uh, this will not be only uh, a focus, a target for a, a very uh, small and narrow group of, uh, of people coming from university, but as Cecilia and, and, and then Ines mentioned, it covers a really broad range of uh, job opportunities. And uh, so thank you for having me here. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, Araceli Venegas Gomez, so, so you are the founder and CEO of Cureka. Um, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So yeah, for the last two or three years at Cureka, we are trying to bridge those gaps between the stakeholders in the quantum community. And we provide different kind of services. So we work with quantum companies on business development. We try to push them into the community to um, have more visibility for them and anything that they need to kind of uh, push forward. We work with end users who would like to understand what could be their strategy to be part of quantum. And we work in terms of training and how they can be part of different consortiums to kind of have, imagine a first demonstrator of proof of concept, but first, training so that's very important then we work a lot in community building we try to focus on different areas where quantum is maybe not the mainstream and we had our first quantum latino this year and we are going to have similar events next year for different regions around the world and last but not least is really our core business to focus on the development of skills and the development of the quantum workforce for that we have an online platform with um, different online courses we partner with uh, different companies and experts to build this kind of a career path in terms of education where we focus either in languages so we are building courses in different languages and we also want to focus on business sectors we started with finance where we have kind of different courses for anyone who wants to pivot into financial applications quantum applications and then we also kind of 
develop different training uh, and resources in terms of education for anyone, really any kind of company and really feeling that we want to have this value or impact added for any business. And we provide resourcing. So if you imagine this training and resourcing, what we call our skills platform, this comes together because what we want really is to understand where people are and where they want to go in terms of a quantum job. And we train them or we train a company or we train them into having a strategy for resourcing. And then we also work with, uh, with the resourcing uh, planning on either recruiting directly as a, as a normal recruiting service or trying to develop that strategy into resourcing and training. So yeah, that's all what we what we do. And I think this is a very neat dis discussion. And last but not least, I wanted to mention that I see in the last year, everybody talks about the quantum workforce. Two years ago, almost nobody was mentioning these. And I'm really <laughs> pleased to see that, yes, there is a need, there is a gap and there is a bottleneck that we need to address. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you very much to all four of you for, for setting the stage. Now we know who you are, what you, what your competences and viewpoints are. And, and now we'd like to sort of dive deeper into what the quantum workforce then might look like 10 years down the road, because if we are putting in place initiatives right now, they need to be targeted, not at what we are seeing today, not next year, but really 10 years in the future. So, so I'd like to hear your perspectives of, of what that is. And, and, and before that, I just want to, to start with a slight provocation if I can, and that is that uh, half of my time I spend at the business school, uh, uh, also uh, lecturing there, um, and we, treat, we also um, have a lot of ongoing discussions on a parallel theme of, of AI implementations, and, and I just want to give a scary future look ahead, uh, because some of the statistics, I'll get a couple of statistics, so there are some statistics that say that 70% of all AI projects generate little impact, there's also a statistic saying that AI implementation plans dropped from 20% to 4% from 19 to 20, and 47% of senior managers find it difficult to integrate AI with existing people, processes, and systems. So how do we ensure that something similar doesn't happen as we transition into implementation mode of quantum technologies? So question is then how do we see the quantum workforce and the quantum industrial landscape looking 10 years from the, down the road is it still let's say as technically focused as celia uh, focused as as B celia uh, 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 discussed with us um, or will we see the emergence of maybe a democratization of the use of quantum technologies where there will be a service industry maybe also appearing and will that change the workforce distribution and, and, and uh, industrial distribution. So it's important for us to have a clear vision of what is 10 years down the road. Fabio, do you want to start with uh, your viewpoint on the 10 year vision? Sure. So first, first that is actually very interesting what you just mentioned because it's, uh, uh, I think ma machine learning expert, uh, so such as someone in the AI field, uh, it's one of the most uh, wanted job uh, for, for now. So I'm wondering what, which kind of statistics or what, what are they based on? But in terms of implementation, uh, I, I, I can see that this can happen at least in the, in the quantum, uh, uh, for, for what concern quantum computing, uh, where it's clear that there is, uh, um, that everyone is looking to uh, valuable applications and not everyone will be successful. So this uh, per uh, success rate, uh, it, it may be something discouraging for the, for the ecosystem, but uh, also a challenge. So we can also revisit uh, it and re-see uh, the same concept as a challenge. So it's clear that not everyone can be successful, but for the one that who will, will be the driver of this, uh, of this ecosystem. Concerning the, uh, the vision in 10 years, I think, uh, I, first, first of all, I hope that this is uh, something that we could see even before 10 years. Maybe already in three, three to five years, uh, we, would be see, we will be seeing already something completely different from uh, what we see right now. Uh, so I, I think that till now there was a, um, the focus for developing a, a quantum workforce uh, has been uh, put on... Uh, the physics department. For historic reason, 
physics department and always been the one that uh, carried quantum uh, research. And I think this is clearly the moment in which it's a turning point this year, uh, if not this year, next year or somehow now, uh, because it's clear that for developing a, a complex ecosystem, like the quantum ecosystem is looking like, we need many more uh, jobs. As mentioned already from all the other panelists, uh, it's clear that developers, engineers, uh, but also more classical uh, uh, so quantum computing algorithm, uh, but also more on the business side, so sales, uh, marketing, all this kind of job will come in future. And as uh, Araceli said, we need to bridge this gap. We need to, we need to be the one driving this, this change and uh, to allow other parts of the society, so this means the people that will in the end take those jobs, uh, to be able uh, to be ready for, for uh, joining this uh, quantum industry. Yes. Thank you very much. So, so what you introduce here is also the, the 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 risk of hype, and then the and then the integration of a whole ecosystem of various different job functions. Uh, Ines, do you want to uh, comment briefly on on also your vision? Of course. Thank you. Uh, very interesting. I, I I find very interesting the the comment regarding um, artificial intelligence, and um, so. Well, in a sense, I, I think the case of quantum computation is slightly different in the sense that it's um, supposed to be or meant to be a general purpose tool to simulate different types of systems in different types of industries. Um, I hope it's not also becoming like a black box uh, in, a, in a bit like, uh, like machine learning. So we, we might be able to have more control over what we are doing and understand a little bit, a little bit more the, 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 the reason why we get certain results of our protocols, et cetera, but that's maybe more philosophical than the topic that we have here today. Um, and when it comes to um, the, this 10 year, um, um, let's say, uh, site that, that, I, that I have regarding quantum computing, that's also a very good question. I believe that with this approach of uh, application specific quantum computers, we will be seeing how we start having quantum solutions for specific applications pretty soon, maybe in, um, in the next 10 years. And therefore uh, we will uh, start to see how um, we, we begin to, well, that already is the case. We begin to need more people working in marketing, in business aspects, um, in everything that has to do with actually understanding well how to um, place these quantum solutions in the market. But to arrive there, we still have to overcome very strong technological uh, frontiers. We still have to make a, a lot of breakthroughs. We still have to understand how to, for instance, implement error correction and better error mitigation techniques and noise mitigation techniques, et cetera, and also to understand better the measurement problem, for instance, which is touching foundational aspects of quantum mechanics. And I personally love this topic. So I think there is a lot to do also from a technical perspective. And that's why it's very important that companies make a lot of, uh, well, make very strong partnerships with academic institutions. So I think it's kind of a very exciting landscape that covers everything mostly. Yes. <clears throat> and so, so the question is really from the, from the point of view of the, uh, where is the calculation done if we talk about quantum computing? Is it done locally at sites? Do we have compu quantum computers at every industry? And, and do we have a section that really is responsible for that? Or do we see something more like services in the cloud? In the cloud? And, and this will influence uh, what kind of interfaces and which kinds of teams we will have locally. Um, Araceli, do you want to comment briefly and then Celia after that? Sure. So three comments. Uh, from what you have been saying right now, um, so it, it really depends. It really depends on, on the company and it really depends on the technology. Not everything is, uh, is going to be quantum computing. There are other technologies and there are different business sectors and the applications are going to be applied in different time frames. So it really depends, but it's really about starting the conversation understand where they are, where they want to go and how we can really develop that strategy. Then on the comments from, from before, so one thing is that at the moment, again, we are really, as Ines was mentioning, we are really still developing the science. We are really early in terms of quantum computing. Yeah. So 
of course, most of the people that are required are people with very, very niche expertise and experience. But this is changing. As Celia showed, it, you can see already that companies are starting to look for other skills. The issue is that in a very short time frame, these companies are starting to look for, let's say, a product management or um, a marketing director with knowledge in quantum. And this short time frame in the last three, five years, we don't have people with those skills. You cannot expect that someone has experience of five years in something, you know, any management related field and also knowledge in quantum. So we need to wait. We need to wait really for five, 10 years to have that kind of pivoting um, expertise between PhDs that have been working in a, something very, very specific, very particular to kind of a, having, as you were mentioning, Jacob, kind of more service oriented and people that have been working for a lot of years as business developers that they can pivot into a quantum company without just a little bit of addition on, on the training side. And the third comment is uh, really when we think about the next two decades, how this job market is going gonna, is gonna to explode. And probably if you have seen this morning, uh, we have been doing this estimation, it's going to be exponential. So there are two things there. So one is the job market right now, that is what I just explained. And then this job market of the future, we, we are talking about students that are right now in primary schools and high schools and so on. So this is something that really is completely different of the skills that we are seeing right now that are needed. It's really about a lot of outreach activities and education. And so that's why we need really to focus on these kind of two mainstreams the present and the future of the world. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Celia. I, I agree totally with what Aricelli just said. Um, I think, and there was a question or a comment as well that sort of said, it feels like a bubble. Are we really um, you know, aiming towards the right target somehow, or is this gonna disappear? Um, I, I don't worry about that too much. I think that educators are providing skills and lifelong learning capability with an understanding of what, what quantum means. And I, my view is that the job in 10 years, the jobs are gonna be growing um, or the sort of um, makeup of where the jobs are is gonna shift from at the makers, the IBMs and IQMs and, and, and companies that are developing and making the technology and the ones that are using it. And you'll have many more of these companies like pharmaceutical companies and finance and energy and, and others. I was on a panel uh, not long ago with someone from the insurance world and someone from a, a quantum computing making company. And it became apparent to me that the needs of the user uh, employers are, are somewhat different. But um, I remember having a conversation once with somebody from a big investor company. And he said, I work for an engineering firm with a bank on the front of it. So behind there, there's a lot of technology. And I think that's true in more and more industries today, manufacturing, everything else. So having sort of technology understanding, and in this case, quantum technology understanding will serve a, a student well going forward. And I can, the last point I'll make is sort of a reminder that I think those of us who've been through our careers or closer to the end than the beginning can look back and say, I had no idea that I would end up in all these jobs on the way. So what you're really doing as an educator is to prepare people for a long career that's going to go in, in some unexpected ways, but giving them those tools. And, and quantum is different from traditional science and technology. So I think that will serve uh, those students very well in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> so when we, when we previously talked about the potential bubble or the transformations of uh, of the industry from a very high technology focus to a, to a more broader application oriented. Then at the business schools, when we're looking at the AI failures, they are very typically organizational failures. So that is when you are implementing those technologies, not just having the technology experts there, but having everyone aware. So, so for the last five minutes, I'd like to just maybe pivot back to the, the educational challenges that we have and maybe draw a triangle where we have as Fabio maybe said, the physicist, and then the moving out from the physicist, let's say the physicist on one side, the computer scientist, that's the engineers on another side, and then let's say the, the business school uh, competences at the third. So that triangle, how can we support best uh, evolution along all sides of that triangle so that we support the, the future needs of the workforce? Adesely, do you want to start with that? And then everyone else, if you have a comment, just uh, raise your hand. Sure. 
Um, so I, I see two ways. One is uh, uh, at the educational level in the academia, really to um, cross check uh, syllabus between, between careers. So having people studying computer science uh, to have the chance to have some lectures in, in quantum um, mathematics, linear algebra and so on. And I have seen these coming from engineering and, and then being in quantum, there are a lot of crossovers. It's really about working together. So it's a lot of collaboration between different institutions and different universities. This is one thing to be done. And then the other is really about retraining the workforce in, in industry at the moment. Now, one of the things that we are trying to do is really, um, for example, classical software companies um, where we could help them to retrain specific core um, team uh, into quantum that they can uh, then mentor themselves uh, in the future, the, the rest of the company. So it's really about kind of uh, having this pivot uh, again into, into retraining the, the current workforce within the companies and then uh, prepare the, the one that is coming after in, in the academia. Mm -hmm. Fabio. Yeah, uh, I actually think uh, that this is, uh, this is a very good point. So we talked about education and we, when we think about education, we think about uh, uh, a young student at the beginning of uh, his or her career at university choosing uh, which department to join and so on. But I think industry retraining, it's an extremely important part of uh, education, especially uh, given that the time frame we are working, yes, it's 10 years in a long term vision, but it's also something way, way, way closer, let's say in the next two, three years. For the next two, three years, of course, it's very important to, to give uh, importance to industry retraining. So workshops, seminars, and any kind of uh, courses, any kind of activity that uh, not only... Uh, so clearly for a long-term vision, is more, the focus is more on the academics because it's, it's the natural way of uh, developing the, uh, the basic knowledge. But for a more short-term education, I think, uh, company service provider and other companies can uh, supplement the type of education needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and so so just for the for the last couple of minutes, very brief comments from you, if you have comments uh, on existing initiatives, training educational initiatives that you can see that fill a gap that need to be scaled up, or initiatives that are uh, are needed to be started up. So we're talking to our legislators, we're talking to about to to our decision makers. What are these key, key initiatives that we need to, to focus on from now on? Uh, Celia, do you want to start? Well, yes, I, I feel very passionately, and this is a hard thing to scale, but um, it, nevertheless, I think it's incredibly impactful, and that is to connect the students with opportunities in industry, because when they're in school, they're in an academic bubble, their advisors and mentors and everybody is from the academic world. And so having programs, and these can be funded by government programs that, and then you need also the industry to kind of step up and be a partner and give those students opportunities. It's a win, win, win for everyone. And, and you also establish connections between the industry and their advisors and their faculty. So even at that level, you get expertise and knowledge flow. So I like that kind of program very much. And we're setting one up hopefully at QEDC. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ines, do you want to uh, give your perspective? Yes, perhaps I, I would like to, to mention um, an existing program that I, that I love and that to me goes right in the, in, the, in, the, in the right direction, which is the Quantum Entrepreneurship Lab in the TU uh, University, Technical University of Munich. And what they really do in this lab is really they gather people that come from different environments, from different uh, educations. So they are really forming multidisciplinary teams to actually solve um, uh, challenges that are posed by quantum companies. And that's really, I think, a cool approach to make young people like, like, like them uh, to really gather together in these multidisciplinary teams to actually solve um, problems that companies are posing. So yes. these are, I think, cool steps. And very briefly, Fabio, uh, 
Yeah, just I want to add, I mean, national initiatives and uh, single uh, universities initiatives, I think, are great, but also uh, the international initiatives, such as, for example, uh, I mean, also the European level, uh, what has been done by the quantum technology education. So QTA do with all these pilots program that are focusing on different uh, industry retraining, uh, master courses, bachelor courses. So this is, I think, it's a, it's a, it's a work in the right direction because it's multidisciplinary and it's, uh, and it's open. Thank so, yes. yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> with that, our time more or less ran out. We have just very brief final word from Araceli and as a goodbye to everyone. Okay, yeah, so following on Celia and Ines, we are launching the Quantum Fellowship Program that is actually that we want to place students who want to pivot into quantum into some projects in companies. So if you want to know more, just reach out to me. And then last but not least, I think we end users have to be a little bit more open-minded. As Fabio mentioned, it's not just in the long term. We need to think quantum in the short term. So we need to convince them that they should put some resources on that. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for your participation. It's been really exciting. I love. I would love to have had more time and, and we look forward to engaging in these discussions and, and continuing going forward. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.